You don't have to go very far to find a barn find. Case in point, I live three miles from this location. Drive by this road every day twice. Oh, look at that, there's a Corvette over there. I'd say a truck in the evening here, but during the day, there was nobody here. So I, I came back one night, Adam answered the door, it was dark. Adam, thanks for allowing me to come back. Adam, tell us about this car. What, what's the deal? How long have you had it? This car was a, is a project car. So I was born in 1979. It's a 1979 Corvette. When you look back on GM's production runs, this is the most produced Corvette at the time when I bought it. So I figured it worked out for my birth year that there would be a lot more supply and this was just a project car. So I got it about two years ago uh -huh. um, in Virginia and we drove it down. It still needs a bit of work. It has an issue with the battery. It's, it, it takes the power out of the battery a, a lot, but the, I haven't had a whole lot of time to put into it, but hopefully this year was the year to get it going. So you bought it as like, just like this, did it have all this like tree sap on there and stuff? It did not, it was, did not. That's thanks to the pecan tree. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, and, who, and who is this, your co-star? This is Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> have you been looking for a Corvette for a while? I had, um, it's like you said, the American Lamborghini, it's, it's the American muscle car. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't have computer chips in it, so right. which I was a big fan of. If you enjoy our YouTube videos and have been wondering how you can help support their creation, consider joining the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes a subscription to Haggerty Magazine, unlimited access to our valuation tool, exclusive offers and rewards with reputable brands in the automotive industry, 24-7 roadside assistance for flatbed towing, early access and VIP perks to select Haggerty member events, and unlimited classified listings with no additional fees. You can find the link in the description below. Can I open this? Yes, absolutely. Your intention is to drive this like as a weekend car kind of thing? Just local travel, nothing really extended at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daisy, look, there's a motor. Look at that. <laughs> it's a V8. <laughs> <laughs> so is this the base engine, 195 horsepower or, or the 220 horsepower or what? 195. So it's got a new Edelbrock uh, carburetor and we did some engine work, um, but it still needs a bit more to, to get it going. So I, I noticed the mileage on there, 35,000. Do you think that's a real? I do. Really? Yep. How did you find it in Virginia? Uh, this was on, uh, did an eBay search and we just talked through, you know, uh, picking it up and it's white, red interior. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh huh. And so you drove it back, no issues? Um, we put it on a trailer. It actually came in and it has a new steering column. The steering column had an issue with it. So that was sent off to, uh, it was a facility in Colorado that put the bearings in it, reset the bearings and, uh, and it works, that works fine now. Uh, what is left to do on this? Um, that's a good question. It's an automatic transmission. Uh, I would imagine there's some electrical work so that the battery doesn't get drained too quickly. Yep. And then uh, just getting it road uh, ready. It needs some suspension work on it as well. Mm -hmm. Had you had a Corvette before or is this your first? First. Now, had a Mustang before, Okay. Um, but this would be the first Corvette. Yeah, cool. Well, and it's not for sale. You're not selling it. You're, this is your keeper. It's a project car. I'm not actively looking to sell it, but at some point I'm going to want to get something different. So I'm open to suggestions, but at this point it's a project car. Got it, got it. Old Corvettes don't have much horsepower, but they're plentiful. There's lots of these cars around. Lots were made and lots still exist because they didn't rust away. It's fiberglass. Now, the chassis rust away. Got to be careful. But if we go to the Haggerty's valuation tool, Okay, this is a 1979 L82 Corvette. It's got a 350 motor with 225 horsepower. If this were in Concours condition, which this is far from, it, it values at 40,600 bucks. Number two condition is $29,000. Number three is 18,000. And number four is $11,000. I think this car runs and it's probably in number four condition. You could probably clean up this body okay. So it's probably an 11 grand car. You know what? Things could be worse than driving one of these cars. You drive a two-seater sports car for not a lot of money. Well, thanks for letting us come over and I don't have to wonder about this car anymore. I've seen it here and I don't have to wonder anymore. So thanks, Adam. No problem. Have thanks, a good Tom. day. I want to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Consumer Cellular. 
Consumer Cellular delivers premium nationwide wireless coverage for up to half of what the largest carriers charge. Has award-winning 100% US-based customer support. If you need help or want to make the easy switch, you can call and talk to a real live person and they'll talk to you for as long as you need help. They have the latest phones, but if you want to keep the phone and number you've already got, that's fine too. There's no contract, you pay nothing up front, and activation is free. Be sure to click the link in the description below. So most of the people on Barn Fun Hunter, I'm meeting them for the first time. You're seeing the people I meet for the first time the same time I am. But David's a different story. David's been a friend of mine for decades. And David's got a shop that specializes in sports car body repair and restoration. And he's painted so many cars for me. I know David well. And he said, yeah, come on over. So we're not here to see the cars he's got in his shop, but we're here to look at his cars that are in a barn behind this building. So follow us. By the way, there's a Lotus Europa out here you guys don't want to miss. It's pretty cool. <laughs> You've had this since 82, so that's, that's 40 years. Yeah, most of my hat has been almost 30 plus years now. So what year is this? It's a 74, it's a five speed version. I had a red one that I bought, that was my first project that was destroyed in the front and it got me into this and I totally took it down to the frame and rebuilt everything. What was funny about this car was at Thanksgiving we had our family or my mom's family over and my aunt was out looking at in my red one and she said my neighbor down the street's got one of these behind their house. And this is it? <laughs> yeah and when we went there at Christmas in Monroe I asked, I said, um, where's that car at after we ate? So I didn't think it was legit. Walked down there and it was sitting there and I just saw God. <laughs> and yeah, I had to buy it. Yeah, so. Is it a twin cam? Yes, but I used to drive it a lot and I had to rob the carbs off of it to put on the red one and I got new carbs for it, but it, it started setting and I got busy with work and just hadn't had a chance so to mess with it. Your intention is kind of in your semi-retirement. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Is What's involved with you know, you take the body off, start with the frame. Yeah, it's a big X frame, right? Is it made of tin like the Europa? I mean, like the Yolanda? Yeah, the yeah. frames are pretty close the same on it. Except this was set up for a rear engine or mid engine setup, and the Yolanda's they were designed with the wishbone with the front engine. Well, let's see. I haven't been in your barn in a while, so. Hey. If you like this new logo we have for Barn Find Hunter, and you'd like to buy some apparel with this logo on there, you can finally do that. Click the link on the description below, and you can be wearing Barn Find Hunter hats and shirts too. So this this is kind of my world right here. I really yeah. dig this. So these are your own cars. That that can't be a restoration project. That's yeah, Paris car. So it's a right-hand drive MGA coupe. Yeah, my favorite parts about these cars, I don't know why, I love the little door handles on here. The coupe, yeah. Only the coupe had the door handle, the Roadster didn't have it. There's a, an MGA Roadster, is yeah. that, and, and so what are you gonna do with that? A uh, guy actually gave that to us, um, that he came and bought one from us and built a hot rod out of it. And once he was done with his donor cars, he didn't have a need for it. Instead of sending it to the crusher, he decided, you know, to oh, yeah. send it back. It looks pretty solid. So here, here you grew up, in the heart of NASCAR country, muscle car country. What is it about <clears throat> British cars that kind of turned you on? Well, I always loved Ferraris when I was growing up. Sort of followed British cars too. And there was a Lotus, that Europa was sitting uptown. And I saw it when I was a kid. And the front end was tore off of it. And I followed it and finally made a run to try to get it. And it took me two years to chase it down to finally work a deal on it. And I bought it, and when my parents um, shook their head when I bought it, because it was a total mess, and I said, I'm gonna make a, car, a show car out of it. Really? And they couldn't believe it, but that was all my time dedicated when I was 18, 19, you know, and got it finished, and Dad was with us, and we went out to Virginia to the first show, and it won first place up no there. No kidding, and, and you were like a young guy. Yeah, you know? I was 20 years old. Here's a couple of cars that I really dig. This is a rather rare one, it's a panel truck. What year is that, do you know? I think it's a 60, 
four sixty five, something like that. Uh huh. And it's right hand drive. So where'd you get that one? We were down in uh, Atlanta. There was a place called British Car Spares. Used to make runs down there to buy parts for the projects that I was working on. And we used to run down there. My brother lived in the mountains at the time, and we'd shoot down through Atlanta because I had an engine guy that was building my engines. And we'd always swing by there with my list of parts. And he had this thing sitting out there at the door. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an interesting car, you know, that we thought make a cool delivery truck or something. And I talked to Lee down there, and he gave me a price, I think, they wanted 400 bucks for it at the time. How long ago? That uh, was probably 80, probably 86, 87, something mm -hmm. like that. Another one of those that just sat on the back burner and stuff. So you never drove it or anything? No, yeah. it, the floorboards were out of it and stuff. I think some service guy may have brought it back mm -hmm. with him since it was right hand drive. I, I started getting into building Cobras and now I'm doing GT40s and stuff. and. I try to take care of my old customers too, and it just seems like my time's always limited, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, with yeah. all the others. Yeah. But as I'm getting older now, I'm gonna to try to start cutting back where I can spend time with my yeah. stuff. Got it. So th this is a car that I've had a few of, Sunbeam Tiger. So what, what's the story with this car? Uh, probably back in the late 80s, a guy come by my shop, had a E-type Jag that he bought, and it needed floorboards and metal work done on it. So he gave me his address down in Concord, rode down there to see him, and when we went in there and walked around the back of the yard, all of a sudden this was sitting out there in the backyard. Whoa. And I was more interested in this than, you know, the Jag. And uh, he was talking about it and I, I looked at his car and gave him a price on it and uh, I asked him about the Tiger. He said, yeah, I picked it up and stuff and it was an abandoned car and uh, he got the paperwork and got it titled and everything. And he said that his neighbor down there offered him $500 for it and I'm like, are you serious? And I told him, I said, well, for $500, he said, heck, I'll." Um, fix your car and do all your metal work on it and we'll do some trading out on it and stuff. And so that's how you did it? Yeah. So, for it. Wow. Yeah, so I just Let me, did that and worked it out. Uh-huh. I'm gonna just move this over a little bit so I can see. Yeah. So is it complete? Still got an engine in it? Yeah, it's a complete car. So uh, these had 260s in them? Yeah. This except for the very last ones. Now is this like a possum gonna jump out of it? I hope not. Uh, Bob Altoff came down here from one of his friends wanting to look at the um, air cleaner oh, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. somebody had taken it off but we opened the hood up and uh, somebody had uh, taken the, uh, the air intake off of it. Let's see if I can find it. Oh the air cleaner that's a tough one to get too. Yeah but I've already found one for it. There we go. Oh there's something living in here. <laughs> yeah. Yes sir. So when that air cleaner went off, somebody moved in. Yeah, well, we opened it up and there was a possum in there, snarled at us, it sort of startled us. <laughs> wow, but I, I it's, a good look, it's a good looking motor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's well insulated and stuff. Is this a, a, a project? Yeah, between this and my 104, those are my two priority projects and stuff. No kidding. Yeah, when I get in the new shop, then that's what I'm intending to do. Is I have the room set aside for these where I can tear them down. So are you, what are you, on. like three months away from the new shop? That's what I'm shooting for, hopefully in there by the middle of May. What will happen to all this stuff when you move to your new place? Probably throw the stuff that, you know, that probably wouldn't be used or whatever and just mm -hmm. get rid of it for um, haul off the metal and stuff. So this is a nose for a... a this is a Lotus a Esprit Lotus? Turbo that I've had for years that I found all the parts for it and it's up there in the shop. Mm -hmm. And I made a vow that I wouldn't do any of these until I got that one done. And I've got it, all the parts to finish it now. And when I move in my new shop, that's gonna be the first thing I would do is paint it. And so that's the one closest to being done? Yep. This would scare the willies out of me. I mean. But this to you is no big deal. No. Well, sir, I don't want to keep you too long from your uh, customers in, inside there, but you've always done amazing work. And, I, you know, Thank like you. I brought you crap and you've made it look beautiful. My Corvette, the Lotus, uh, 
So I have no doubt that one day these are going to be beautiful as well. So thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. That's a 93 Supra that I painted a couple of months ago. I don't know if you saw it down here, but the guy was putting the interior back on it. And the thing cranked up out in his driveway and shot through his garage into his bedroom. <laughs>